we hear more, we get a double dose today about the end of the world. Not always easy for us to understand. One thing that Jesus wants to make clear, though, is that the tribulations that take place are not necessarily signs of the end of the world. We can see that if we looked at this last century, the 1900s, we could really say that maybe people thought that the world was really going to end because we had two world wars in one century. That's a lot. Plus nuclear weapons. These are frightful things. And we hear this when we hear these kinds of things happening, you know, we can we can wonder why it is that they are happening when we can say, Why is God doing this? But we want to remember, first and foremost, that God's will is for peace. His will is for us to live in a particular kind of prosperity. And yet, the issue is this, there's sin in the world, and people are free to walk right out of God's protecting hand. It's that simple. When nations or peoples or any individual decides to go on their own path, and not on God's path, well, it's very simple. God just simply lets them experience the the fruit of their own sin. We hear something a little bit kind of troubling in this first reading, the book of Revelations. If we were paying attention, um, it it may indeed kind of give us reason to pause. That basically, these angels that come to harvest are collecting the earth's vines and its grapes. Now this should, this should kind of give us a little bit of pause. So these grapes get thrown into the great winepress of God's fury. And I wonder about that. Because Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Right? And that God the Father tends the vine in such a way that it might bear fruit. And what fruit grows on a vine? Grapes. So why is God collecting the grapes and throwing it into the wine press of his fury? Because God's chastisements aren't the end of the story. There's a new wine. There's a new wine being prepared. Remember the wedding feast of Cana, they had run out of wine. And Jesus comes and he he makes present a new wine that's even better than, than the wine before. And they are gladdened. It says in scripture that wine gives joy. God has given wine to give joy to man's heart, to the heart of mankind. So God's ultimate plan is not that we experience these sufferings and these tribulations, which if we are Christians, we are going to suffer. We know, Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, pick up your cross and follow me. But he's asking us whether we will be producing fruit that's good fruit. You know, when a grape is crushed, you can tell what's in it. Right? You can tell whether it's good or bad. When, when it's crushed, you know, okay, either this is good for wine or it's rotten. Same thing with us. Sometimes God sometimes needs to allow us to be pressed in order to see what fruit we're going to produce, what comes out of us. If what comes out of us is violence, hatred, bitterness, well, it goes to show we're bad fruit. Probably get tossed. But if instead what comes out of us is gentleness, joy, peace, patience, kindness, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, then there's good fruit. Then there's good fruit. Patience, by the way, means to suffer. It doesn't mean to never be aggravated. Okay? Just so that we're clear. Just so that nobody gets the wrong idea that if they're ever aggravated, that somehow they're not being holy. If you're aggravated but don't blow up, 
and you don't show your wrath, you don't let it lead to wrath, that's patience, that's good fruit. The ultimate wine that God offers to humanity is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And if we are Christians, everything that we go through and everything that we, are, we, we suffer, we are called to unite to Jesus' passion. And so we can see that. Here's that fruit being added. He added, Jesus took upon himself all of the punishment due to sin. And so as members of the body of Christ, yes, there's this weird thing that happens. It's called, we help Jesus in his redemptive suffering. We know this to be true as Catholics. But the suffering doesn't have the last story. There's the new wine of being united to Christ in intimate ways. There is the breaking forth of the kingdom of God here and now, which we want to begin to see. Today, we celebrate St. Francis Anthony Fasani, who is a conventual Franciscan in the 16, late 1600s and early 1700s. He was known for his apostolic Preaching, meaning he would go forth and just simply tell people about Jesus, tell people about the good news in the section of Apulia in Italy, which is kind of towards the heel of the boot, if you know Italy. It's the arch and the heel, not the, not the toe. The toe is Calabria, right? It's kicking Sicily. I should have just made some Sicilians mad, but... St. Francis Anthony was known to have extraordinary graces. And this is, this is what happens when we remain faithful to the Lord. The Lord then begins to manifest his kingdom through us. We should, begin to, we should expect to begin to see this. And if, we, and if we don't, it's very simple, we need to ask the Lord to do it. Because even the very grace of persevering through trials and difficulties, who does it come from? God. Who's willing to give it? God. Why do we know that he's willing to give it? He gives us Jesus at this very Mass. So all of the graces that we need to be faithful to him to the end, to persevere, to go through the trials and tribulations, so that we can be a part of the wine that brings joy to humanity. Not that continues to give bitterness and, and violence and, and the whole cycle of war. This, instead, we can be sure that if God is giving us all of these graces, that if he's giving us Jesus, he'll give us all these graces besides. So we ask St. Francis Anthony Fasani also for his prayers today, that we may persevere that we may be faithful to the end and see the Lord manifest his reign through us.